No, no, how many times have I tried to tell you? Now don't, don't turn away from me, look at me. I play better than you sing. Look, middle claw, B natural. Middle claw, B natural, and you played a B flat that time. Look, I know you got some great chops, but you gotta work on your fingers. So listen, kid, don't feel bad. Just work hard next week. You got the talent. I know you can do it. Gee, you really think so? Absolutely. I, you know, I'm sure that most of you guys out there have taught clarinet have had similar problems with your students when you just got to be a little tough on them. But you know, deep down inside, they still love you. Jerk. One thing's for sure, teaching is not a popularity contest. And that's why I put this video together uh, to help you learn to teach double lip and to teach it with good solid principles so that your students will like you as much as my students will like me. Jerk. Well, enough of the perils of Daisy and her clarinet playing. We'll see how she does next week. Uh, now, let's see. We were talking about double lip playing. And in our first video, we identified actually two methods of reed control. Uh, one primarily identified with double lip playing, and the other that it seems to be the common practice of most single lip players. Uh, this, uh, this practice that single lip players uh, often do is uh, called biting or clamping the reed in order to get control of the pitch, color, and shape. And it's essentially a step, three-step process, as you can see in the drawings here. First, the clarinetist opens the mouth uh, wider than the embouchure aperture, and uh, then the uh, mouthpiece is inserted into the mouth, and then pressure is added to the reed by the jaw closing on the reed and pressing the reed to the mouthpiece and the teeth pressing on the top of the mouthpiece and that pinches the reed down so you do get control of pitch color and shape but with a loss of resonance uh, that causes a lot of brightness and inflexibility and also cause you to play sharp the second method is what i call the friction style method as opposed to a clamp method the reason i call it friction is because friction is the method that's actually being used uh, to to uh, add pressure to the reed rather than clamping with the jaw and this is a very simple process Actually, it's a two-step process. It starts with the clarinetist uh, creating an opening or a fixed aperture uh, that is about the size of the embouchure itself. Uh, with a lot of people, depending on their teeth or on their bite, the jaw might move a little forward to move the teeth a little more even with one another. But anyway, once that fixed aperture is there, the embouchure is essentially passive after that. The jaw doesn't open. The jaw doesn't close. It simply floats there. Then the clarinet... Uh, a mouthpiece and the reed are brought up to the mouth and then gently snugged against the lips. The lips remain quite firm and resist the movement of the uh, the inward movement of the mouthpiece and reed. And of course the mouthpiece being bevel shaped, the, the more you snug against the lips, the more firm the pressure is on the reed. And control is gained that way. And one of the advantages of that is that is that uh, the the pressure that's being applied to the to to the reed to control it is oblique rather than direct, and this means that uh, the reed can vibrate more fully along the curve and you get more depth in the sound. And also, as you add pressure on the reed surface by snugging, you're also pushing the tip of the reed past the pressure point, um, and the tip of the reed is open quite well to respond. So you have uh, quite a bit of resonance, quite a bit of responsiveness from this method of control. And it produces a better balance of freedom and control, a much better balance. Whereas the clamping method actually produces a compromise. So if you clamp, you get control. But then if you pull away, then you lose control. Well, with the friction method, as you gain control on the reed surface, you're getting more freedom at the tip. So these are the two primary methods. And actually, the best single lip playing also uses the friction style method but it's much more natural to use the friction style method when you're playing double lip so anyway this is the approach now there are some specific questions that some people might have about playing double lip beyond these basic differences in the methodology of reed control we're going to try to address some of those in this video One of the first questions people start out with when they're starting to learn how to play double lip is, gee, how much upper lip should I take under? I mean, uh, 
you know, uh, should it be a lot? Should it be a little bit? Well, the answer to that is what is most comfortable to you? Obviously, people's teeth and lip relationships are going to be different. I have fairly long front teeth with a short upper lip, so I can barely get my upper lip under. Uh, a friend of mine that I used to play clarinet with years ago had a rather long upper lip and short teeth, and he took quite a bit more upper lip under than me, but both of us were comfortable in what we did. So that's the that's sort of the, the, the watchword is, is that you have to be comfortable and not do anything uh, extreme. Uh, now, I would say to avoid try to take, trying to take too much upper lip under because the red of the lips are going to have to be there to cushion the inward movement of the mouthpiece as it, as it snugs its way in and uh, the lips got to resist that. So uh, try not to let the uh, lips, uh, either lip, lower lip or upper lip, cave in as the mouthpiece and reed begin to snug in. Otherwise, it's a pretty simple process. Now we come to a little more sticky question, but one that has a firm answer. Uh, the question is, how much mouthpiece should I snug in? Well, you want me to snug in, but just how much? Should I take uh, an inch, an inch and a half? Should I put a mark on the mouthpiece? Now, none of that's necessary. The final determining factor are two things, how it sounds and how it feels. In other words, you're going to gauge the control of intervals on the clarinet, and you're going to gauge the sound uh, as the determining factor. Take a look at this diagram here and you'll see. At the bottom of the diagram you start out with no, uh, no pressure on the reed and you see the, the, the color representation there shows it's very diffuse and then as you snug it gets more and more intense until finally you reach the, uh, an uh, ultimate focus and pitch point. So the pitch is its highest and the, the color is the most concentrated but if you snug too much, let your lips cave in, snug too much, and too much of the mouthpiece goes in, you hit the old law of diminishing returns, and the sound begins to set, the pitch begins to sag, and the color begins to spread again, and you'll begin to lose control. Play the sound where you find it, as Keith Stein used to say. You snug in there until you find that most focus point, um, and then there is your sound. Uh, here's a couple examples of that. Another thing that should be accompanied with that snugging, which I always say with my students, thumbs up, get the thumb up there so that the mouthpiece stays snug against the lips. Uh, as the thumb goes up, another thing happens. The tongue goes from low and flat into the mouth to high and back. And here's a couple diagrams so you can see the difference in those tongue positions and how it affects the airflow. Next, let's actually listen to what a difference tongue position can make in the actual tone production itself. So that's the deal. That's the way it works. I always said to my students, thumbs up, tongues up. You know, many people are critical about double lip because they think the sound is very flabby and uncentered. This is because the students get lazy and they don't keep the mouthpiece snug against the, against the lips. Well, doing that's no embouchure at all. No, no, double lip is not a no-pressure embouchure. You have to use the thumb, the right-hand thumb, to snug up and keep the mouthpiece and read firmly against the lips. The jaw is in a fixed position, never closing, never opening. It's very, very passive like opening a curtain on a stage. Okay, those are the basic approaches. Not too much upper lip under. Uh, don't let the lips cave in. And snug until you hear the sound at its most focused point and its highest pitch. And don't go beyond that. There are a few other tests and a few other things and some pitfalls we need to talk about. That's going to be coming up in the third video on how to play double lip. Submit your questions and the subjects you'd like to see covered to sales at ridnerclarinetproducts.com. Thanks for watching. Jerk.